Hey there thinkers, welcome back to Critical Hit. My name is Us, and it looks like Ubisoft just can't seem to catch a break. And by that, I mean they can't stop shooting themselves right in the foot. It's looking like DEI is their new hobby, but instead of being a charming pastime, it's more like watching a ship sink in real time. Now, Assassin's Creed Shadows could have been a hit, but instead they decided to go all in on this wokeness instead of, oh, you know, actually making a good game. And now, after the pre fucking dictable backlash, they found their favorite target, the gamers. Because clearly, if the product bombs, it's the fault of the people who are supposed to buy it, not the company that made the game feel more like a corporate workshop than an actual adventure. Strange. But hey, why learn from mistakes when you can just keep alienating the very fans who used to champion your games? Like, at this point, Ubisoft's strategy is looking less like connect with players and more like finding new ways to tick everyone off. I mean, like, what could go wrong with that, right? However, I have a few things to say here, but before I do, we have a small request. If you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button, smashing that like, and ring the bell to be notified for our next video. We would greatly appreciate this, since this will help us appease those YouTube algorithm gods. So, we thank you. Now, let me give you my thoughts on this, and let's get into it. So, Assassin's Creed Shadows delayed. Shocking, right? Like, Ubisoft must be in complete panic mode, trying to salvage whatever wreck of a game they can before they send it out to sink. Like, they're probably sweating bullets over how this tribute to Japan is likely going to offend every culture they're supposedly celebrating. Because nothing says authenticity like rushing through a game's development to patch together something just good enough. But hey, I mean like why stop at offending Japan? Ubisoft might set a record for ticking off every gamer worldwide. Maybe they think a few extra months will somehow transform this train wreck on every level into a masterpiece. Or maybe they're banking on gamers having low enough expectations that any game, no matter how broken or disjointed, is acceptable as long as it has a recognizable logo slapped on the box. Like, maybe that's giving it way too much credit. I mean, at this point, it just feels like they're polishing a rock and calling it a diamond. So apparently Ubisoft decided that this franchise needed some DEI spice, so cue the director's dramatic lament about how diversity is totally ruining his creative vision. And he's so fed up, he's doubling down on the creative genius that no one asked for, lashing out at critics who dare question his masterpiece. And it's been a very busy year over there, hasn't it? Because Star Wars Outlaws barely made it at the door, but not before getting a hefty dose of the Galactic Karen aesthetic. And yes, that's right, they apparently thought that the world was itching for an accessible space heroine who could out-complain a galactic HOA. Like, that project tanked drastically, and Ubisoft is left scratching its head about how exactly that didn't fly with the fans. Like, after all, I mean, like, who wouldn't want to shell out $70 to play as a perfectly sanitized space mom? See, now we have Assassin's Creed Shadows parading its historically inspired black gay samurai, a character Ubisoft swears is rooted in reality, but actually seems more rooted in the DEI boardroom checklist, because nothing screams authentic quite like bending history into whatever shape fits the diversity quota. Like, they might as well slap inspired by actual real-ish events on the cover and call it a day. Because Ubisoft must have thought they were developing a social justice creed instead of an assassin's creed. Because apparently the creative process now involves more seminars on pronouns and diversity than actual game development. Like imagine walking into Ubisoft HQ, like you've got all the coders and all the designers ready to brainstorm epic battles and intricate plots, and then HR marches in with a How to Respect Pronouns 101 seminar. Do you remember when this series was about stealthy assassins, historical intrigue, and oh right, entertaining gameplay? Well, instead Ubisoft has pivoted to what's really important, like telling a samurai story but with a Black Lives Matter undertones, because when players fire up an Assassin's Creed title, what they're really craving is a dose of 2020's social commentary. 
right? And as if that wasn't enough, Ubisoft's diversity initiative took it one step further, actively excluding white men from internships. Because apparently if you're a white guy who wants to apply, you're just out of luck. Now, some insiders have claimed that HR is practically running the show over there. Now, maybe the next Ubisoft game can be titled HR Simulator, The Agenda Chronicles, where players can complete quests like Respect Everyone's Pronouns or Master the Art of Inclusive Storytelling. So here's the Saiga. Ubisoft decided to make a game that casually reimagines Japan's history, because clearly that's the one thing they hadn't butchered yet. But unsurprisingly, the Japanese audience noticed, and they weren't exactly impressed with Ubisoft's creative liberties. And the backlash was immediate, accumulating in a petition with over 100,000 signatures demanding the game's outright cancellation. Ubisoft realizing they'd seriously underestimated how much people care about their own history, and awkwardly pulled out of the Japanese game expo to avoid facing said music. Then came the apology. I mean, if you can call it that, because it was a few sentences about cultural sensitivity and respect, conveniently void of any actual accountability. As for a parting gesture, they pushed the game's release date back to February 14th, which we all know is code for we're really praying everyone forgets about this by then. But the real kicker here is that rumor has it they might delay it again, and apparently it's taking a little bit longer than expected to figure out how not to insult an entire country. So Ubisoft's Assassin's Creed head honcho, Mark Alexis Cote, admits diversity initiatives could, you know, maybe mess with the game's quality, but apparently that's just the cost of progress. Instead of listening to fans, those pesky people who actually buy their games, Ubisoft is taking its our way or the highway approach, which complains about Chinese assets standing in for Japan. Well, who cares about accuracy when you can just make a quick asset swap, right? And let's talk about their bold new character, a gay black samurai complete with a romance arc because nothing says ancient Japan quite like ignoring all historical contexts for the sake of inclusivity points. Ubisoft seems to believe that slapping an Assassin's Creed logo on a box means fans will buy it no matter what's inside. Like, why bother respecting your core audience when you can just bank on brand loyalty, right? Like, after all, who needs historical immersion or cultural sensitivity when you can just check all the diversity boxes and call it a day? So Kote is out here insisting that Assassin's Creed has always been this paragon of diversity and inclusion, like it's the founding principle of the entire series or something. Like his shiny example, a totally plausible African-born samurai named Yasuke, and an equally believable fictional female warrior, Nawe. Of course, we're just all supposed to nod and applaud because, well, <laughs> representation. But here is where it gets interesting. Kote's historical accuracy seems to be hanging by a thread, if not completely entirely out the window. I mean, like a black samurai roaming around feudal Japan? Sure, historical records definitely back that up, right? And Nawe, our fierce fictional female warrior, has raised some eyebrows too, because apparently, feudal Japan was a lot more into breaking gender norms than we ever knew. But hey, I mean, like, who needs accuracy when you can just slap DEI on it and call it a win? Now, Ubisoft insists that with a perfectly straight face, that this isn't some modern agenda. No, no, it's just an innocent reflection of diverse perspectives, because obviously, 21st century California is exactly what everyone envisions when you think of feudal Japan. And don't worry, they are listening to criticism just as long as it's the right kind of criticism. Like, you know, the praising soft fluffy stuff, but if players raise actual concerns or voice disappointment, that gets quickly categorized as harassment because clearly being disappointed in our product means you're out to just ruin Ubisoft's day. So instead of taking any of this as a sign, they're veering completely off course. They've decided that unhappy fans are the real problem, villains even. Because who needs self-reflection when you can just blame your audience? So there you have it people, Ubisoft's PR department has spoken. And the real villains are 
the fans, of course. It's not like they've taken a beloved franchise and reshaped it for a DEI agenda. No, that's just the part of progress. And the problem is clearly that the audience is just too mean and ungrateful to appreciate all these innovative changes. Never mind that the backlash isn't about intolerance. It's about gamers being fed up with corporate agendas hijacking their favorite games. But hey, why bother respecting the core audience when you can just blame them, right? I'm sure that will go over just great. However, those are my thoughts on this. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And hey, before you go, subscribe to our channel, smash that like button, and ring the bell to be notified for our next video. As always, this is Est, and I'm signing off now. So I'll see you in the next one. Toodles!